Hey, Kitty, what are you reading? Oh, how to build a rocket. Well, that sounds really interesting. Hope it isn't hard for you to understand. It isn't rocket science. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, friends, I'm sure we all have heard someone saying that it's not rocket science when someone finds something difficult to understand. So, in today's episode, let us explore and try to understand this challenging world of rocket science and find out whether it is really very tough to fly a rocket. Zoom in! Before we launch ourselves high into space, we need to get grounded and try to understand that like all objects, rockets are governed by Newton's law of motion as well. Let us see how. Well, the first law describes how an object acts when no force is acting upon it. So, when the rocket is standing on a launching pad, before it is launched, it will stand still until an external force is applied to it. Not only that, but once it is set into motion, it won't stop or change its direction unless and until an external force is applied. Now comes Newton's second law of motion that tells us that the heavier an object is, the more force is required to set it into motion. Just like that, if a rocket is small and weighs less, it requires less amount of fuel. Whereas, if the rocket is on the heavier side, it requires more fuel. Next comes the most crucial part, the third law of motion, whose principles apply more prominently on the working of rockets. The third law says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. In a rocket, burning fuel creates a push on the front of the rocket, launching it forward. This creates an equal and opposite force on the exhaust gas backward. You see, to launch the rocket upward at high speed, the fuel plays the most important role, which is also known as propellant in rocket science and can be either solid or liquid in nature, stored inside the fuel chamber of the rocket. This stored fuel is burnt, mixing with oxygen gas. The hot gas shoots out from another end and the thrust pushes the rocket upwards, creating a tremendous amount of momentum. This is called jet propulsion. But is the thrust produced enough to launch the rocket? Well, sometimes the thrust produced is not enough and fails to lift the rocket and to overcome this failure, certain stages are followed. At the first stage, the solid propellant boosters are attached to the rocket. Now, this first stage of the rocket plays an important part and carries a considerable responsibility to lift the rocket along with its content. It can move the rocket up to 28,000 kilometers per hour far into space. After this, the solid propellant boosters get detached as they consume all the fuel. That's when the main engine starts its work and helps the rocket to move further into the orbit and also gets detached after consuming its fuel. This detachment is followed on further stages, which slowly helps the rocket achieve greater acceleration. These separated parts either fall off into the ocean or is burnt up into the atmosphere. And after passing all the stages, the object which the rocket carries is finally sent and set into the desired orbit. And that's how the rocket is sent so high up into the space in search of a brighter future. 
Trivia time! Did you know the first rocket was invented around 1100 AD in China? These rockets used solid propellants and were mainly used as weapons and fireworks. Also, you won't believe, but to be able to burst through the gravity of the Earth, a rocket needs to travel at a speed of 7 miles per second. Now, that's some speed. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah, never mind. Hey kids, you liked my videos, didn't you? Before you go, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the bell so you won't miss out on my latest videos. <laughs> See you!